Today's episode of DRL is brought to you by Hella Cocktail Company. My guests don't just come to DRL for me. They also come for the cocktails. Luckily, my friends at Hella Cocktail Company have my back. These guys make amazing mixes from Bloody Mary to Margarita to Moscow Mule. They also make cocktail bitters, my secret ingredient, and now yours too. It's easy to feel like the best bartender in town when every bottle comes with a simple recipe on it. Hella Cocktail Company, bold flavor, real ingredients, hospitality. Mixing it up since 2011. Shop the collection on Amazon Prime or use code DRL online at hellacocktail.co for free shipping. Hello, my lovely listeners. Welcome back to another episode of DRL, where we're talking everything dating, relationships, and love. I'm your host, Tanisha Wood. Today, I have Rhonda with me. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? I'm great. Please tell us about you. So my name's Rhonda, and I am living in New York City and here visiting Puerto Rico. So it's beautiful. So you are going through a divorce right now. Where are you in the process and what's that like? My soon-to-be ex-husband did not want to sign the paperwork, so I had to redo it so that I, he could be served. So I served him almost a month ago. Tomorrow, I'm able to finalize all of our divorce stuff. How long were you married? Nine years. We were together 11 years. We got married a year and a half after we were dating. Mm. So we were married for nine years, 2010, and I left July 2019. How did you know that you wanted to marry him? I honestly just wanted to get married. I was 34 when him and I met, and I was at an age where I'm like, oh, I'm getting older, I want to have kids, da, da, da. And the things that he was talking about was really like, it sounded good. It sounded like he was marriage material. So it was less about what he said and more about what I wanted. So that is, I think, the projection that I had, like saying, oh, I want to get married. I want to have kids. This guy wants to get married. Let's do this. So the timing was right on your part. Absolutely. And at the time, I was the secretary at our church. And it just seemed like everything was like falling in line. It was like, oh, he's a good man, da, da, da. So I didn't really listen to actually what he was telling me. I kind of projected of what I wanted. I wanted a husband. I wanted a father for my children. And it was less about him saying, oh, I am on disability. I'm laid off. I'm this and that. I wasn't really hearing that. I was more so hearing the fact that he's like, I really want a good woman. I really want, you know, I was listening to what I wanted to hear. So that for me... Being transparent about what it was, that's what it was that attracted me to him. So how far into the marriage did you start to listen to him and what he was saying about who he was? Oh, gosh. I think it was probably about three years into the marriage um, where I started recognizing because the first three years I was like, I think I'm doing something wrong. Because our marriage is not what I anticipated it being. And there's some things that seem off. You know, (laughs) what did you expect and what was actually happening? I expected a reciprocal relationship. I expected my husband to bring to the table. Oh, I'm willing to provide for our household. You absolutely bring money into the household, but I am the main breadwinner. We, you know, you contribute, you pay whatever half or whatever we agree upon. But when I started being the main breadwinner consistently throughout our marriage and there was no reciprocation. Honestly, his responsibility was for our phone bill, our cell phone bill. That and just less than two hundred dollars for yeah, two phones. Yeah, yeah. And I get a discount for my job, so there's a discount. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even that, but but that's what I'm saying. Like after years and years, it's like yo, like I need more. Like, Why did you let more. that? Go in the first place. Because I felt like I was married. And this is this is my husband. Honestly, I believed in his dream. Like, he is a great at what he does. He's really good at what he does. And I felt like, okay, he just needs encouragement. He just needs, you know, I, I, saw, I saw the purpose. I saw the promise in him and the potential. I married potential. Mm, I mm, married potential. That's a gem. I have heard yeah. time and time again, you can't marry what somebody will be. No. 
You can't because it's unrecognized. It's unrealized. They may not ever get to that point. They have the potential to do it, but whether or not they do it is on them. Mm -hmm. And that was the issue. I married because I saw potential. At that point in the game, I should have been like, you can't, it can't be just about potential. Right. It has to be about some tangible concrete. Absolutely. Yeah. Of what you can accomplish and what you're willing to do. Do you think on his side Mm -hmm. of the relationship, he was affected by you being the main breadwinner and sort of the person with the the career and thriving Mm -hmm. in that way? Did that, I don't know, maybe taint his ego a bit? I, I do. I think that because just being, just realizing who I am and seeing that I have some enabling um, ability, I enable. I don't help to a healthy level. Sometimes I can enable. So I do believe that me being the main breadwinner absolutely had an effect on him as in regards to him being, quote unquote, the man. You know what I'm saying? He felt kind of like, oh, I'm not really bringing much to the table, but because he had an extended ego, there was some sort of kind of weird thing going on with like, oh, I but I can control her because she wants to be a good wife. She wants to be submitted. She wants to be this and that. But then also on the same hand, but she's paying for everything. In your mind, was being a good wife sticking through everything no matter what and no matter how unhappy yeah. it made you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I know until about year two, Year one to year two was like kind of like, oh, yeah, he's a good guy. And he did contribute where he could. Um, But year two and a half, three, up until year nine, it was like a a downward spiral. (laughs) I mean, it was really bad. It got to a place where it was very, um, I don't know. It was just like. It just got worse and worse, Mm -hmm. where initially there was more money being made. There was more money being shared. And I I did have to ask for things to be done, but there was more of a willingness and more of a like, okay, I'm going to do this for my family. And then as it was shown that I was able, willing to enable, so willing to say, okay, you know what? I got this. You don't have it. I'll figure it out. Then there was more of a lax nature on his he got part. complacent absolutely totally complacent so from year three then when things started to kind of go downhill to year nine mm-hmm. when it you know hit the peak mm-hmm. why didn't you leave in between that like in those six years like you know things were just progressively getting yeah. worse like why did you wait yeah so initially i was at a place where i was like well maybe it's me because my you know, soon to be ex husband. He's very charming. His personality is very persuasive. So a lot of things he would say would make me feel like it was me that was the issue. Mm. So for a very long time, I thought, well, maybe if I was just a better wife, maybe if I was cleaning the house better, maybe if I was cooking dinner more often, maybe if I was doing this, I was doing that. So, so you just continue to try harder and harder absolutely, and harder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Year two, three, four was more like, okay, I mean, I leave home for work at 7 a.m. I get home from work 7 to 7.30 p.m. Let me clean once I get home from work at 7 7 What was he doing from 7 to 7? He was in his office working. So I did the hand, you know. Like office at home? Office at home. When I work from home, I never work. <laughs> Shout out to the companies I used to work for. <laughs> yeah, he worked from home. So there was this kind of, you know, I'm in my office, I'm working. And honestly, he would be doing stuff. Every time I came home, he was always, you know, arranging stuff or, or fixing stuff with um, maybe music or doing whatever he do- did at mm-hmm. that point. He was always doing stuff something but what one of my mentors told me is that if you are not making money at it it's a hobby Ooh. it's not a job especially over the course of many years absolutely so even though you were doing something it wasn't a job because you weren't necessarily making money doing it so for me it was kind of like okay well he's doing something but then as the years progressed it was kind of like you know what 
you got to have some fruit from this. And there's not fruit. So that's a problem. Yeah. Did you bring it to him in that way? Initially, I didn't because I didn't want to bruise his ego. I wanted to be respectful. I didn't want to be like a nag. I didn't want to stifle his creativity and want him to believe that I didn't believe in him. But it was urgent. It was kind of like, yo, like, really? Something has to happen. That's a tough line, you know? Not wanting somebody to think you don't believe in them, but at the same time, trying to enforce that, I mean, bills. Ah, Hello. Food. They come every month. Et cetera. Yeah. You know, and I, I do find it a little bit interesting that as a man, when you're ready to get married. Mm -hmm. A lot of men will have the, the perspective that I may not be ready because like, Oh, I'm still trying to do this in my career Mm -hmm. and in my job. And like, it generally is sort of this mark in their minds Mm -hmm. when that they're ready when that part of them is is sort of complete to a certain level. And I'm not saying that like, Oh, you shouldn't get married if you're not where you need to be in your (laughs) career. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I do think, I mean, I think for women, too, I, I do think that when you enter a relationship or marriage, like, I don't think it means like, oh, great, I just got married. Let me <laughs> stop working now. Let me stop yeah. doing, you know, it's not that. But I do think that you should come into a partnership whole. Absolutely. You know, so like, how was he paying his bills before you got there? Absolutely. You know, like he should have been able to do that on his own anyway. It should Absolutely. just really be like, great, we've just doubled our income now that we're together yeah. and we're paying you know, half the rent. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it makes it easier. It should make it a, a easier situation for everybody. Exactly. And that was not the case. I mean, honestly, it was a lot on me because initially when we got together, there was, he was in the process of a divorce. Oh, so yeah. he was married once he before. He was married before. He had a house. He has a daughter. He has two daughters, but he had a daughter from a previous marriage. And, but for me, that was the thing. It's like, oh, he's stable. Like he has a house. He has, you know what I'm saying? His name is on the deed. Da, da, da. He has this and that. The boxes were checked. But in closer inspection, there was some things that were not totally, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good situation. Did he tell you why he got divorced previously? Mm -hmm. He was very upfront. He was very upfront about them just, they were actually separated in the same house for several years. Wow. And it was just like a situation where it didn't work out. And it was very massaged. It was very, <laughs> it was very we conveniently. Grew apart. Exactly. It was very, but now I see so clearly what she went through. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because this is the same exact thing that I went through. Well, I couldn't say same exact because he was working full time. He was doing all of that kind of stuff. It was a little different in my situation where he was an entrepreneur and where there was more so, you know, he was not working a nine to five. Right. Where with her, he was working nine to five plus doing his entrepreneurial stuff at night. But with me, he was full time entrepreneur. So it was more of a situation where I allowed for that freedom where the other situation did not. One of the things that I've thought about recently is a due diligence. Mm. And so typically when two companies merge, they do, before they do the actual merging, they do what is called a due diligence process, Mm. which is where everybody has to put everything on the table. So Mm. for example, it's like this company has leases, the type of insurances they have, all of the the profits, all of the losses, the last like 10 years of Mm. taxes, like it goes very deep and very detailed. Like granular. Yeah, yeah. but everything mm-hmm. is then exposed so that the company buying the other company can then decide, okay, based on everything, and I'm seeing everything on the table mm. now, I do want to buy this company, or this is a bad investment <laughs> for me, so like, let's not do this right. anymore, right? Let's forgo this. And yeah. so I've thought about this concept That's in marriage concept. a lot lately. I've thought, you know what? When I do get married, I need a due diligence process. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want any surprises. Mm -hmm. I think that it's easy to go about in a relationship without maybe talking about certain things. 
you know, particularly like if you don't own property together, if you don't live together, you know, like any number of things, if you're not sharing accounts, Mm -hmm. a lot of things are separated, Mm -hmm. you know, by design. A lot of things are separated before you're actually like together in a marriage. Yeah. And for me, I'm like, yeah, I would want, I want to know everything. Like, I want to know. I think that's why. Yeah. Like, I think that's why. I want to see your last seven years of tax Absolutely. returns. Like, you know, even a step further, I'm like, we need to write like five year goals, like, and be tracking but those. That's awesome that you're even thinking like that because well, it's partly because I'm a control freak. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but also, I want no surprises. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's the thing. For me, I definitely did not do my due diligence. That was a problem. I didn't say, okay, Aranda, what do you want? What do you expect out of this marriage? What do you really want? Like, and you know, we went to premarital counseling. Mm-hmm. We wrote out stuff. But when I went and looked back when we were toward divorce, I looked back like, Dad, how did I get to this place? You what know? did you guys write out? Like, what do you do in premarital counseling? So premarital counseling is more so like, what is your history? What do you expect in marriage? When they say history, are they asking like your marital history? Absolutely. Marital history, past dating history. Like what did you, what do you come from? Mm -hmm. What do you expect in relationship? Like what has your track record been? Um, And honestly, a lot of the things that were said were very similar to what we said we wanted. Then as we were together, maybe it it changed. I don't know. I can't really speak to that. What did he want initially? Initially, it said that he wanted to be the breadwinner. He wanted to (laughs) real talk. I was like, yo, did I hallucinate? Like, (laughs) I am reading this right. Leah, I I literally, before I left, um, I was like, like, how did I get to this point? And like, why did I think that this was so different than what it was? And I went back to our premarital booklets, what we wrote. Oh, I think that the husband can be be the breadwinner, but the wife should have, you know, if she wants to work, she can work. If she wants to bring blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yo, that was like total opposite of what our relationship was. I think we did the right things, but maybe not a total honesty with each of us. There were things that were disclosed to me in his previous marriage that should have been a huge glaring red flag. Like what? Like abuse, like, mm. oh, I just snapped and I did this and I did that to her. And I'm like, really? You did that? But it's like, oh, well, he would do that to me. You're not it's like disregarding things that were blatantly in front of my face, you know? So that was on me. Honestly, it was. I mean, there was no pretense with that because it was told to me. It was right. very upfront. It was very like in your face. OK, this is a situation. And I chose to ignore it. You know, maybe were you thinking we're different? Me and him are different than him or her? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a different person. I'm this and that. Maybe she said something. Maybe she did something. I don't know the situation, you know, which is crazy. Because if you'll do it to one, you'll do it to all. It's if just you it's who you are. It is part of your character. Right. It is ingrained in your character. Because if it's not, then that would mean that every person that came along mm-hmm. had the ability to change who you are. Absolutely. Which would make you like schizophrenic right (laughs) every new person that you encountered you're like i'm a totally different person now like it's like you have a personality disorder (laughs) you know (laughs) that's the problem right yeah no that's totally true and be but because what i wanted was so important i wanted to have kids i wanted to be married and you see the order of that i wanted to have kids i wanted to be married so it was like okay so being married was the means to having children quote unquote, respectably in a a order that it is seen how it's supposed to be. So let me just, okay, this guy wants to get married. Let me go get married. Then I can have my babies. Then I could, you know what I'm saying? And it was wrong. It was out of like sync. And initially when him and I first started dating, I honestly was about to cut him off. Why? Because it was too much. He had kids already. He had a grandbaby already. Oh, when wow. him and I met, he his daughter, um, oldest daughter, had just had our first grandbaby. She wasn't she wasn't even a month old. And I'm like, yo, I haven't even had kids. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have grandkids yet. I'm I'm gonna be a grandmother and I don't have kids. Did he want more kids? You know what? He said I caught him right before a vasectomy. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> but he did say 
He said, I would be willing to have another child. I'm not selfish. I'm open to it. So he was open to it in theory. Let me say that in theory, because when, when it got to a place where we were supposed to have, where it was like, okay, we can have kids, da, 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 he didn't really want to. He didn't want me to go. Like, I had issues getting pregnant. We tried for, like, seven years. I had issues getting pregnant. He did not. He, he like, he, like, really buckled down. Like, no, you don't go to the doctor for it. I don't want you getting tested. I am not coming in to get my Did he end up tested. getting that vasectomy? Are we sure That's it was what you? Are we, else sure, are we sure it was you that had issues? <laughs> <laughs> That's what somebody else said. They're like, how do you know he didn't get the vasectomy? I was like, I don't know. I never thought of that possibility, though. That's the first thing I thought of when you said yes. it, when you're like, we were trying all that time. I had issues. I was like, mm, did Maybe? she have issues? Was it really you? That's what I, I had more than one person say that to me, but I would have never thought that because, you know, I'm like, no, he wouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't do that. He's honest, you know, but you, you're right. It definitely could be that type of situation. But we tried for years and he never wanted to get me even to get testing. I did get a little bit of testing because I was like, yo, I really want to find out if there's something going on with me. Right. So I did get a a test called a HSG to make sure my tubes were open and they are, you know, things like that. My ovaries look good. Da da da. But he never wanted me to go get any other testing. So it was kind of like I was suffering with this by myself. I wanted to have babies, but you know, looking at it in hindsight, it was such a good thing that I did not have to. Well, yeah, because then you'd be forever oh, linked to him. Oh my gosh, forever tied to him. So it was a it was a blessing in disguise, even though I was really angry and sad and broken and it caused a lot of doubt within me. You know what I'm saying? Because as a woman, you want to have kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, most women. I'm not going to say all women because I have friends that don't want kids. But um, me, personally, I wanted kids. And it was like, but I couldn't even find out if there was an issue. So why didn't you just go anyway? Because it would have been hell to pay. And that's sad to say, but it would have been. It was always an issue of if the, if I did not do what was quote unquote wanted or what what he thought was the right thing to do there was punishment and not saying necessarily physical it was more emotional abuse more like silence he would not talk to me for a week he could go come in the house and not speak to me at all and he would go right into his office and not say anything to me for a week for a week walking past each other sleeping in the same bed not talking to each other and it was, for me, I'm a communicative person. I like to communicate. I like to talk. I like, hey, how are you? I'm just very bubbly, very open. And not to talk to somebody is like death. Torture. Absolute torture. Yeah. So how would those sort of silent retreats end? Like, mm-hmm. how, would he start to talk to you? Would you start to talk to him? Or would he just get over it? Or how did that? I would always try to talk, always try to break the ice. And then eventually he might say a couple words. And that's how it would break. He would break it. When he wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Because even if I talked to him, he would answer one or two words. It wouldn't be something that he would have a conversation with me. If he didn't want to talk to me, he wouldn't. And then if I say like, why are you acting so weird? Like, why don't you talk to me? He'd be like, silence and walk in his room. Yeah. So it was, and he literally had another, he had an office. So he had a room in the house to go to and he would close the door. Do not come in my office. Sometimes he would lock the door. Don't want anybody to come in. So it was really bad. Were you talking to like friends or, you know, family as this was all going on or did you kind of keep it to yourself? I isolated. Absolutely isolated. And honestly, I isolated for most of my friends. So when, when I was married, I have friends that I've had for years but I didn't talk to them. I didn't. I didn't even reach out to them. So the turning point for me was when I got, I started saying, you know what? I'm super unhappy. I really need to branch out and work on myself because I can't change how he is and I'm married. I can't change him. Let me change myself. Mm -hmm. I started going to therapy and I have a mentor that was somebody that was a friend of ours from years before me and my husband, my soon-to-be ex-husband. And I was like, well, let me reach out to her. 
she had actually been through a divorce and she had been in a similar situation. So her and I started talking and she was so pivotal in saying, Aranda, you don't deserve this. Like, Aranda, this is not consistent with what a husband should be doing. This and that. Like, pointing out things. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in an emotional and mental abusive situation, you start to question who you are. You start to question what's right and what's wrong. And, like, is this my fault? Like, I know it's wrong for him not to talk to me for a week, but did I do something to create that situation? And especially when you're in a position that you were where you're isolating yourself, Absolutely. there's really nobody there to tell to you of. that this isn't right. And Absolutely. then so you're just sort of caught up in like his world and your world. Absolutely. And within that world, it seemed somehow right. Yeah, it, it was weird because it was like I was double guessing. I'm like, this doesn't sound right. But is this me? Is it me that's really like off? Like maybe if I'm a better wife, quote unquote, if I cook more, if I clean more, if I do this, if I do that, then I'll be a better wife and maybe our relationship will be better. But the more I did, the worse it got. And then I started going to therapy. Did he know that you were in therapy? He did know. He did know I was in therapy. And then one time when we were really in a bad place, I was like, you won't even come to therapy with me because we were going to do you know, a couple therapy or whatever. And I was like, you won't even do therapy. And he's like, well, I'll go with you. I'll go. You haven't asked me in a while. So we ended up going. And while we were in therapy, my therapist at the time was like, well, why are you here? He's like, well, I'm just here to see who my wife is talking to. <laughs> so I'm just here to exhibit the controlling behavior that she's probably been telling you about. So here it exactly. is. Exactly. Here it is. In the flesh. <laughs> and she was like, Aranda. She was like, I was so ready. Like he was, he refused to come back. He said, but I'm not coming back because I don't need therapy, but I think she should continue seeing you. Anybody that <laughs> says they don't need therapy needs Probably therapy. Probably needs therapy. Needs therapy. Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it was my, my therapist at the time was like, when I came back the next time, she was like, where's Tony? And I'm like, he's not here. He decided not to come. She was like. I was ready for another good session, a hard <laughs> session. She was like, I was really ready, but it was really a, like kind of like being really gentle and walking around ego and kind of, you know, that kind of thing. So it was, it was really hard. And the six years in between the time that I first realized something's not right mm -hmm. and when I left, it was about trying to save our marriage. It was about... Because you wanted to or because you believe that was the right thing to do? Because I believe that was the right thing to do. I wanted to be able to say, if I leave this marriage, I know I've done everything I could do to try to make it work. And the thing is about a marriage is two people. Right. If there's one person that's doing all the work, it doesn't work because it requires both people to be 100% invested. What was the thing that made you say, we're done, this is it, I'm no <laughs> longer trying to be the best wife I could be, it's done. It was a culmination of a lot of events. One of the events was 2018, we went to LA for his birthday. And my grandmother ended up being in the hospital at that time in LA. We were in LA. I hadn't seen my grandma in many years. And at that time, my grandmother was in the hospital. I'm like, oh, I need to go see my grandma. She's in the hospital. And it's like, we're here for my birthday. What? Yeah, we're here for my birthday. What do you mean? If you're going to go, you need to go now. I'm like, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. I just found out she's in the hospital. I don't even know what hospital she's at. Well, if you're going to go, you need to go now. Well, I can't go now because I don't know what hospital she's in. We're in Los Angeles. Like, I have no idea which hospital. So by 10 something, I found out the hospital. And he was like, well, I'll come, but I'm not coming in. I'm going to sit in the back seat. So our daughter was like, I'm going to come in with you. But my grandma was like 95 at the time and she had had a really bad fall and it caused her to be like out of her mind. Mm -hmm. Like she had a mental break and they didn't want like people that she wasn't familiar with in the room. She didn't even recognize me. 
So when I went to her room, I stayed there. I said, well, I just want to see her for like a half an hour and this and that. And I stayed like an hour because she was so out of it and it was so heartbreaking. And I told my daughter, I said, when I get to the car, I'm going to cry because I'm not an overly emotional person. So I'm like, I'm going to cry when I get to the car. When I got to the car. I love that you can control that. I will be crying at 4.55 p.m., okay? It's so true. I did. I said, I'm going to cry when I get in the car. When I get in the car, I'm going to let go. And you, mind you, my soon-to-be ex was in the back seat, and I got in the car, and I just bust out crying. And mind you, I'm not an overly emotional person, so if I'm crying, it's serious. Like, it's serious. And I just cry, cry, cry for maybe three minutes, and I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and he was in the back seat mad. At what? He was mad because I took more than 30 minutes. I took an hour. And just the fact that we were there because it was his birthday weekend and we were celebrating his birthday. So he wasn't like, hey, at all. I see you're crying at and all. clearly upset. At all. Let me put a hand on your no. shoulder. No. Seething mad in the backseat while I'm crying. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no sympathy. No empathy. No like, are you okay? No like, what can I do? Nothing. How's your grandmother? Nothing. Not even once wow. asked, how's your grandma here? Not once. Wow. That, for me, was the last straw. That was one of the, like, that was like, okay, something's wrong with him. You know what like, I That I can't a, fix. Like, that, that, that is unfixable. And that's not okay. And I'm not willing to be in that situation anymore. Like, and then my aunt that lives in L.A., I hadn't seen her in a very long time. So she was like, can I come see you? I haven't seen you in like three years. Can I come to where you guys are? I'm willing to drive where you guys are. And my ex is like, no, it's my birthday weekend. Oh, my God. I'm like, but we've already done everything we plan to do. We're back at the, the Airbnb. Like, you, she can't come by? No. No, it's my birthday. Yeah, so that whole thing, that was a final straw. That was a final straw. It was like, okay, you're a narcissist, and this is not okay. It 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 was so like. So in those moments, did you say to him like, "Yeah, are you out of your mind?" Yeah, I just was seeing my sick grandmother. Who absolutely like, come on, absolutely. And what and was, was he say? He wouldn't say anything because he was so mad. He was so mad. There was no conversation. There was more like, "How dare you." Like, what? We came here for me, and now you're making it about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it's about you and it's about your you family. and your sick grandmother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you put her in the hospital. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, seriously. Yeah. It was it was really bad. So that, for me, was the the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And, and that so at that point, is like, that the first time you thought divorce? No, I didn't even think divorce then. What I did you think? I thought, like... Something's wrong with you, and I'm going to see what needs to be done to try to, to, to work this out where I can save our marriage. Oh, wow. Absolutely. So what I did was I started working on me. I was in therapy. I was doing all this stuff, and then I started getting more direct because one thing I noticed about myself is I was indirect. Like, oh, this is really hard for me. Like, I really need help, like, with the finances. This is really hard. I need your help. Get a job. Help. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I started saying after that. After that experience, it was like, you know what? You need to get a job. Like, I am no longer willing to pay this rent. I live. We live in New York City. Like, I'm no longer willing to pay $2,200 a month for you to sit up here and come on, stop it. You need a job. And that's what I started doing. I started being very deliberate and very specific. Mm. No, you need a job. I, I I need a job? What? Uh, yeah, adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, adults pay to live. You're an adult. You need to pay to live. I'm no longer willing to pay everything. Like, come on, stop. It's been nine years. Was he shocked in those moments with yeah. the change in how you were addressing Absolutely. him? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's like, people have been getting in your ear and who's talking to you. I'm like, <laughs> it's that therapist. Right. <laughs> Let me go back. Exactly. To her. Like, what's going on? But after a while, I was like, you know what? This is not working. And then I put my foot down. And I was like, you know what? I'm not I'm no longer willing to pay the full rent anymore by myself. 
and this was in January. I said, you need a job. You need to pay half the rent by March. He wasn't able to. Um, so by June, we went, like, we were still seeking people because he didn't really want to go to to therapists, so to speak. He was okay with going to people in the church and things like that. So we would go to people in the church. We went higher and higher and higher. And I'm like, look, I'm done. I'm not paying any more rent at all. I'm not paying a penny toward it. And if, if they kick us out, so absolutely. Be it. I was like, you're like, I'll still, I'm, I, I'll find a place. I will be all right. Okay. We are not, I'm not paying another dime. I was like, so something needs to happen. So that July, we were supposed to, I told my landlord, I said, August 1st, we're moving out because I'm not paying this anymore. We have a three bedroom. I'm downsizing to a one bedroom. And he's like, no, we should get a two bedroom. Were you planning on downsizing to a one bedroom for just you? By or? myself. Okay. Yeah, I was planning on by myself, but he's like, no, let's look at a two bedroom. I'm like, but no. still planning on keeping the marriage at that point. Just at that living. point, I was kind of like, well, I could still keep the marriage if you know if he's willing to do some things to work on himself, and if he has half the rent for us to move if he has half the moving cost i'm okay like we could still work towards something mm-hmm. but you're not do, you're not financially doing anything he was saying he wasn't willing to do it so i'm like no i'm not i'm not willing to any longer stay in this situation i'm not it was so difficult honestly the therapy and having the mentor and then having friends like that were around me that were like, Rhonda, you're such a good person. Like, why would you settle for this? Like, why? Like, why? And it was just about me being married. I didn't want a failed marriage. I never thought. You don't want that D on your chest. No, I right. never would have thought I would be divorced. I never. And, and for me to initiate it, that was never a thought ever. And it was just like, at any means necessary, I'm going to try to fix this. But You then, didn't want to be divorced because of how you saw it or, or you were afraid of how other people would see you? I think it was a little of both. I think it was more so because we were a nice looking couple. And it was like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's not just, funny, but it's kind right, of funny. It is funny. <laughs> we look really good we together. Look really good together. Pictures. pictures. <laughs> Instagram looks really great. Like we look like such a happy couple, but it's true. It's true. We look really good together. You would never suspect anything. We would go to church together. When um, the pastor would pray, we would hold hands. He would grab my hand. You know what I'm saying? So it looked good. It was more so about the fact that I'm like, we can work through this. You just have to be willing. Like, I'm not the same person that I was when we got married. We all evolve. We all change. You know what I'm saying? We have to be willing to evolve together. But there was no willingness. It was a dichotomy. It was what people thought. But more so, it was like, I want us to work at whatever we have to do to make this work. But if I'm the only one doing that, it doesn't work. It doesn't doesn't work. So wait, so what happened after that lease was up? So I actually ended up leaving before the lease was up. Oh, wow. Because he got violent. His grandmother passed away, 4th of July, and I loved his grandmother. I loved her. And he was kind of off because of that. He got violent with me because he was asking about where our relationship was going. And I was basically like, look, I'm tired. I'm not, I'm done. I was so dry. I was just at the point where, you know, where you get fed up. You like where you're at the, Yeah. I was like, what? I'm done. I'm kind of done. And he was just like, oh, well, it feels like you're done. Da, da, da. And, you know, he's like, have you told your father? And I'm like, no, I didn't tell my dad yet. He's like, well, I'm going to call your dad. I'm going to tell your dad what's going on. And I'm like, am I like 12? When right. Are you call and that's, my dad? that's what I said. I said, I'm not a child. You're not going to call my dad and tell him what's going on. I didn't tell him because I didn't want to worry him. My dad was sick at the time. I don't want to call my dad and worry him. He's like, yeah, I'm going to call your dad and tell him what you're doing. You're talking about leaving. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, what did he think? You're like, wait till I tell my dad all the things that you've been yo, doing. He would have been told me to leave. That's exactly what I said. And this is what happened. I was like, you know what? 
whatever. I was like, I'm not going to sit here with you and argue with you. This is stupid. I'm, I'm grown. You're not going to tell, like you're going to tell my dad on me. I'm not a child. (laughs) And so I walk out the room. I was like, I'm not having this conversation. This is stupid. So I go back in our room and I was like, whatever. So I start getting dressed and he's like, yeah, I'm going to tell your dad. I'm going to call your dad and tell him. I said, look, don't let me tell, call my daddy and tell him what you've been doing. (laughs) That's what I said. Don't let me call call, dads. I'll call my dad right now. (laughs) Don't let me call my daddy and tell him what you've been doing and that like lit him on fire when i say he ran over to me like he was gonna hit me and i had a a golf club a three wood (laughs) in the corner and i I grabbed the three wood i was like look back up i was like back up i will not be a victim i was like if you hit me i'm gonna bust you in your head like i am (gasps) going to (laughs) i was like seriously he's like hit me b like he was like like squared up like he wanted to fight oh my god yeah like fist up and he was enraged like his eyes was like yeah hit me hit me and i'm like this is crazy because we weren't even arguing we weren't arguing it was so like instant it was like bump. i said that and he just got enraged and i'm like so how scary is that we're in the same house if you're thinking about something you could just get enraged and come and choke me. Kill me. Yeah. And that that's how I felt. I felt like this is crazy. Like that could have been my life right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I just was like, you know what? I was leaving for Chicago like two days after that. That happened in July, July 9th. I was leaving for Chicago July 11th. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll be okay for the next couple of days. So I kind of laid low, didn't really argue, kind of, you know, tiptoed this and that. When I came back on July 15th, I was like, oh, maybe I could wait it out until the end of the month. Because mind you, August 1st, we're moving, right? right? We're separately. We're moving separately. When I tell you July the 17th. So two days after you've been back? Two days after I was back, he started texting like, because I was blessed with a car. I was given a car. Mm -hmm. Very expensive car. And he didn't know that because I didn't tell him. I didn't feel safe to tell him. So... He's like, oh, I found this stuff, and you lie, and you have a car, and blah, blah, blah. And oh, like, he didn't know you had the car? He, he didn't, didn't know, know you were given the car? He didn't know I was given the car. He didn't know I had it. Oh. He didn't know anything. And me not really thinking ahead, I had uh, gotten insurance for the car, and it came to our house. So he saw the Geico insurance, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this for? <laughs> like, he didn't open it. You know, but he was like, "Who's Tesla?" Is right? This? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's like, "What is this for? Either you've gotten a new place, or you've gotten a car. Like one of the two. Da da da. So he was really like on me about that. So my friend had come to pick me up, and she's like, "I can't take you home. Like these text messages he's sending you are very threatening. A lot of my friends are therapists, so they're like, Aranda, he's escalating." He's escalating like he's really getting violent. Like, this is not okay. My therapist was like, be careful. He's escalating. And escalating means that it's eventually going to get to... Uh, Physical. In abuse, there's a cycle. So there is an escalation that happens when they start to lose control, where they're losing control, so they're trying to gain it back. Um, And so they assert themselves in different ways. And he was starting to exert himself you know, in certain ways that were physical. So they were like, Aranda, he's escalating. You need to have an escape strategy. I never heard of anything like that before. So I called my friend before I went to Chicago. I called my friend like, hey, can I come stay with you in the event that it escalates? And she's like, of course, you can come stay with me. And just so happens that day when I left, my friend that I had asked if I could stay with, she was the one that picked me up because I was doing her hair. And he started sending these texts that were like, oh, you lie, you da 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 da, you do have a car, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I cannot take you back home. She's like, I don't feel safe. She's like, something's going to happen. Like, the way he's talking in his text messages are not okay. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm not taking you back home. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not going back home. I was at the point where I was like, okay. But honestly, I left the house with a t-shirt and jeans. Like, I had nothing At all from the house that I pay for. I had nothing. And she was like, I'm not taking you back home. So from that point on, I left the house and never went back. So you never even got any of your stuff? Well, no, I did get my stuff. So I know that um, 
he works on a certain day and I knew that he was there because he's like on air and he does certain work where he has to be there. So I knew that he was going to be working and him and I had talked. He was going to go out of town at some point. And while he was out of town, I went to the house, packed up a whole bunch of stuff. And then another day that he was working, I came with a crew and we all came and got this stuff out. I didn't get everything, but I got a lot of stuff. So what was he saying during that time that you were gone and staying at your friends? I mean, clearly he knew it was yeah. pretty much over yeah. at that point. Well, no, he didn't. He was actually really mean. He was just talking stuff about me. You're a bad wife. And why are you leaving? And oh, this is not of God. And this and that, you know, just really nasty, really mean. I did not leave with the intent of divorce. I left as maybe this will shake him up to say, yo, I'm about to lose my wife. Maybe I can go get help. So warning shot. Exactly. Warning shots fired. But he he started talking bad, talking stuff about me. He started talking mad stuff about me to people outside of his daughters, which his daughters, okay, I understand. And I'm really close to both of them. I understand those are his daughters. You know what I'm saying? But then when I heard him talking stuff to me, to other people, like literally, like, this is your ex-husband. Well, this is your husband. He's on the phone, like speakerphone, like this is what he's saying. When I started seeing the stuff he was saying, I'm like, if he's talking to this person and that person about me, he's talking to everybody badly about me, like really nasty stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I tried. I did everything I could. I did everything I could to try to save this. This is done. Wow. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm done. And I went and filed for divorce. Wow. So what did he say when he got the divorce papers? So initially, before he got served, he was like, it was like a month where he was talking bad about me. But then when, when I cut him off, like really emotionally, I was like, you know what? Don't call me no more. Don't call me no more. I'm about to file for divorce. And he's like, oh, we need to work through this. We need to work this out. I'm like, no, I'm Remember done. Remember those therapy sessions I asked you to come exactly, to? Exactly. That you didn't want to go to, that I needed to go to, that you didn't need, you know? Um, I was like, no, I'm done. So at that point, I was done, done. I was done. And he was, he wanted to get back. And he told me he was going to not dispute the divorce. He would sign. And he would not sign. I'm glad that it worked out, but it was a lot because it was a lot harder than it needed to be because the whole time, this whole marriage, I just wanted you to want to work through our stuff and you didn't. You felt like you were right. Your way of doing things was the right way. And although I had a difference of opinion, you didn't care. And now that I'm done, now you want to work through it? Sorry. No, not interested. So... Nine years in this marriage, Mm -hmm. many of them you either tried to fix yourself or make it work Mm -hmm. or mend, and you finally decided, you know what, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. What would you do differently if you got married again, Mm -hmm. and what did you learn from this whole experience, not just about marriage, but really about yourself? Mm -hmm. I actually, I've defined a lot more what I want. I want somebody that is mutually respectful. It's so many areas that I didn't recognize in myself that were deficient or things that I needed to work on in myself that I hadn't worked on. Do you think you were looking to fill some of those spaces with the marriage? Absolutely. I wanted my whole intent was because I wanted to have children. I wanted to get married because where I'm from, you get married and then you have kids. And that was a natural progression. I was 34 years old and about to be 35. We like met two weeks, two months shy of my 35th birthday. So it's like, okay, your biological clock is ticking. You need to get married. You need to have kids. You need this and that. So it was definitely. I'm 36. So I'm there. I'm right there. (laughs) Exactly. And it's so normal for us. One of the biggest thing I learned is that you need to listen to what somebody's actually saying. You can't listen to hear what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? You cannot project. And that was my problem. I wanted what I wanted. And because I wanted what I wanted, even though he was telling me, oh, I'm in the process of a divorce and I did something to my ex-wife that was physical and I did this and I did that. I wasn't hearing that. 
what I was hearing was, oh, I take care of my kids. I have good relationships with both my daughters. I'm in my grandbaby's life. I'm, you know, I have a house. I have a wife. I have, you know what I'm saying? Even though we're getting a divorce. But I'm looking at it like the glass is half full. But I'm not hearing the stuff he's telling me that's like, wait a second, glaring red flag. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm projecting. I'm saying, I want to get married. And this man, he's been married. I know he wants to marry me. He knows how to do it. Exactly. (laughs) He's been there before. He has a house. He has kids. He has everything I want. Why not? So that, for me, the huge thing is projection. And I've even found myself doing it in recent, like just dating relationships, nothing serious. But like, I'll say, oh my gosh, his mind is so great. Like he has such a great mind. I could just so see us together. And it's like, wait a second, girl, what is he saying? Does he even want a relationship? Does he even want this and that? Like, stop. So now that I recognize that's something that I do, I have to say, you know what? Look, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest about what you're hearing. You have to be honest about what you want. Is this even what you want? So for me, I've learned to define what I want. Do you want just a guy that you can just see whenever and just have whenever and, you know, have an open relationship? Because there's so much in the spectrum of relationship. Because it seemed like before you Mm -hmm. were just like marriage. Yeah. That is it. That is the end all all be all. all. Yeah. But now you're sort of in the place where you're like, there's a myriad of things that I can have within the spectrum of relationships. From single to being married, but there's so much in between yep. that. Yep, absolutely. And that's that's the thing. It's like like forging my way to figure out what it is I actually want. Do I really want to be married again? Do you? At this point, I think I would, but it would have to be mutually respective. It would have to be something where we both want to grow together. So I would definitely be open to marriage, but it would have to be a very specific kind of person that was open to therapy first and foremost working on themselves working on themselves they would have to have they would have to be established they would have to have their own a job a job (laughs) exactly and not just a job but just be established on their own i want somebody that has taken care of themselves you know what i'm saying to some capacity so i'm looking at things a little bit differently I'm saying, what is this person's track record? What does this person bring to the table? What do I bring to the table? You know what I'm saying? Not just what they're saying in the moment when they're in front of you and all the things they want to do and be. That can sound good to them, but that might not be really true and in the scope of what they're doing in their life. You've got to look at, like you said before, what's concrete, what's actually happening, what's actually there, not... Yes, the fruit. Not what we hope, not what we think, but just what is actually right in Mm -mm, front of me right mm -mm. now. It's so true. What advice would you give to somebody who maybe where you were 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. where their goal is, I want marriage, I want a family, and, you know, everything else can come secondary to that? Mm. I would just say just sit by yourself, write out how you see your life in 10 years. Then also write out the qualities that you want in a husband, not thinking about your current partner. What do you honestly want in a husband and what do you want in a partner and why do you want to get married? Mm key that's Mm -hmm. a key like why do you want to get married and just do some soul searching i i i highly recommend therapy with a really good i think everybody should absolutely with a a trained therapist not just your friend i mean if your friend's a therapist it's cool but like somebody trained in you know our mind and how our mind works and how we you know how we displace and how we do different things that are, you know, shifting blame or whatever, you know, just working through our own stuff. I I like what you said about asking yourself why you want to get married. Yeah. Cause I think for so so many people, especially women, Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like this thing that you do in life just because, and we never stop to say, do I actually want this or have I just been told by my family slash society slash whomever that this is what I should have. So therefore this is now what I want. And I'm chasing after something that do I even do want, I it? want it or have I just been told that. Yeah. And so I think that's so important just to sit down because marriage, the thing about marriage, it's not easy. No, You know, it, it's cute. Like the wedding mm-hmm. day is cute. The wedding like, day. That's one day. Yeah. Like, but it's not like an easy thing. No. And I think not like people need to recognize that. I think there's this, sort of fairy tale mm-hmm. projection Absolutely. of marriage Absolutely. where somehow it's like 
everything that I've been through while dating and all the ups <laughs> and downs, it has finally come to this and yes. it's, you know, and all the beautiful. heartache is over. And yes. it's like, no, dear, it's just begun. Because yes. now you could leave anybody you're dating at any point. <laughs> no questions asked. But now, like, you're in it. Like, this yes, is where this is it. it gets hard. Yes. And I don't yes. I don't think people have that view of it. A lot of times we don't even know what a good marriage looks like. And we're trying to emulate something that we have never seen. Right. What does that mean? And then also in black communities and communities of color, the stigma behind therapy is so huge. So people, when they're in a desperate situation where they're not communicating well and where their relationship sucks, they don't want to reach out to therapy because like keeping this house what's in this house and, you know, that kind of mentality and it makes it leaves everything broken for no reason, for no reason. And that's a problem. People don't really even see what marriage is about and how hard it is and how much stuff you're going through. Because once people get in it, yeah, they keep everything yes. slow, close to the cuff. And so all you see is the Instagram photos. Where you're like, that's a beautiful family. And they're but, so cute. But yeah. yeah, nobody talks about just how hard hard marriage is absolutely i'm just thankful i've been educated on yeah. this podcast mm-hmm. and talked to a lot of people about it yeah. so so th- now i'm at the point where i'm like i don't know if i want that. i don't know i don't know <laughs> like I, i've heard a lot of people say a lot of things yeah <laughs> it's no joke it's so many factors that go into it and then also considering that we change we're not the same person we're growing we're learning you have to be intentional about your marriage but it's not easy so what's next for you? Are you like dating right now? or are you- I am not dating. I mean, I'm kind of like open to dating. I'm not specifically dating anybody, but I'm I'm open to it. I'm definitely open. Um, I just, I'm healing. Yeah. I'm definitely healing. I was in a relationship for 11 years that was dysfunctional. So I'm working through my stuff because obviously I contributed. I want to work on my stuff, you right. know, but I'm definitely open to dating. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I am excited about it. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you came on today and shared Thank your story. You. Thank you for being so honest about yeah. everything that you've been through. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I'm me. glad that you're like out on the other side and me too. You know, <laughs> happier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's like a weight has been lifted. Can people like reach out to you on Instagram? It's Aranda's World Food. Mm-hmm. Um, so A R O N D A World R O L D S and food f-o-o-d-s i do food vlogs i do just inspirational posts i do it's actually everything travel it's all types of things so i'm just really i love life and i just want to show it that's awesome (laughs) and you guys please reach out to me and let me know what you think of today's show at tanisha wood on instagram facebook and twitter and until next time wish me love Hello again, my lovely listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of DRL. If you like the show, be sure to go on iTunes and leave a rating and also write a review. And don't forget to share with your friends and tell them all about DRL. Thank you so much for supporting.